asking us to simplify the fraction and it's a complex fraction, a fraction of fractions. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom number. So what do we have on top? 7, sorry, z squared minus 49 over 3z minus 15 and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom number and the bottom number has a 12 as its numerator and a z plus 7 as its denominator. Now, with polynomials, it's generally a good habit to get into to factor. Factor first and then look for simplifications. I always factor almost immediately on these problems. So in the numerator, we have z squared minus 49, and that's a difference of squares, if you remember. So that's going to factor into z plus 7, z minus 7. And in the bottom, there's a gukuf we can pull out, a GCF. Pull out that 3 and we have a z minus a 5. Multiplied by, let's see on the right we have 12, that's cool, and in the bottom we have a z plus 7. Uh, parentheses aren't necessary but they help me to kind of organize myself. So now before we do the final answer, is there any simplification we can do before we multiply? Sure, now we can see the z plus 7 and the z plus 7 canceling from the 12 and the 3, we can reduce 12 by 3 to get a 4, and uh, that looks like it, right? The z's don't cancel, because technically these aren't z's. They're fixed with their 7's and their 5's inside of these binomial pieces. So our final answer on this problem is going to become numerator has a 4 and a z minus 7, and the denominator just has a z minus a 5. You could put parentheses around the z minus 5, but there's no need to, so a lot of times we don't in mathematics, but um, depending on your teacher, I don't think that you would be punished if you put parentheses around it. But at any rate, I actually prefer it like this. Some people will insist that you distribute through the numerator, but this is much more nicely factored. It's much more useful for calculus, for example. Okay, so uh, why don't you pause the video and try one on your own? Here's one for you to try. x over x minus 3 over x plus 5 over 3 minus x. Okay. Assuming you gave it a shot here, on the top we have an x and an x minus 3, and on the bottom we have an x plus 5 over a 3 minus x, so I'm going to reciprocate that into 3 minus x and x plus 5. Any reduction? Do you see anything that simplifies? Well, interestingly, not quite, right? x minus 3 and 3 minus x are different. Those are going to be different quantities. But, if you've done this enough times, well first of all I'll show you how you can see this and then I'll tell you what, the, uh, what you can do as a shortcut in the future, but 3 minus x is the same as an opposite of an x minus 3. If you pull out that negative sign, the minus x becomes plus and the plus 3 becomes minus. So you get a negative of an x minus 3 over x plus 5, and now notice that the x minus 3's cancel and so your final answer on this one's going to be the negative of the x over x plus 5 or again for politeness sake oftentimes we'll write this as negative x over x plus 5 out in front. Now the shortcut I promised was that if you're lucky enough to see an x minus 3 and a 3 minus x these do reduce with each other but they reduce to a negative as we saw right here. So in general, a minus b over b minus a is always going to reduce to be a negative 1. So you can use that as a shortcut if you start to recognize those coming up in your homework problems often.